Chat GPT Canvas is the newest thing out of OpenAI, and like many things, it's in open beta. This is one way to use ChatGPT that's apparently 30% more efficient. So in this video, I'm going to explore how you can start building websites using it, including how to code, write blogs, and a couple of other interesting things. Let's begin. Assuming you're starting on Google, you want to type in ChatGPT Canvas. Not to be confused with Canva, which is a design company that's from Australia, kind of like where I'm from. We're going to head over here and I'm going to go over to just log into chat GPT. So I'll head over here to the top and I'll select chat GPT login. Now I'm already logged in, as you can see up here, and I've got a couple of models here that I can drop down from. Now I'm going to be selecting this new one here, chat GPT 4.0 with canvas, and it helps me collaborate writing code. And I suppose we're going to test it out. It looks the same as the other ones and it has similar prompts, but what I want is to write, create a JavaScript function that creates a yellow circle that is pulsing next to my cursor and follows my cursor as I move it around the browser. And so this is the, canvas in action. It's created this double window section here, one where I've got my chat log and one where I've got my code. This is my code over here. Uh, I can see that it's created a full HTML document with some CSS and some JavaScript and this little box here for the cursor. And I'm going to read the chat here. It says it's a JavaScript solution that creates a yellow circle, pulsing circle just over here. Uh, we're actually going to need to test this in action. And the other thing is this circle just down here. It's a new circle and I've got code review. I'm going to select it and see what happens. Is it going to review my code? Let's see. Added comments. I reviewed the code and attempted to leave comments to help improve it. I didn't really see those comments. First, let me see if this actually works. I'm going to copy paste this into a new VS Code document. Here's my new document. I'll create a file called index.html paste the code in here and click go live. Here's my web server. I can see my pulsing circle here on the top left, but it is not moving with my mouse cursor. So time to see how well canvas works to fix this issue. I'm going to write, it's not following my mouse cursor. It's scanning through the code and it's made an adjustment just over here. I've updated it to work now. So I'm going to copy paste this back in. Let's go back to my server. And now, now it's actually working. You can see that it's work alongside my cursor and it's pulsing. Now in terms of pulsing, it's getting larger and smaller. Let's see if we can customize this a bit. So it's going through once more. All right. So I think it was here in the pulse. We've got opacity now added. And if I copy this in, now it's working perfectly. Now let me show you how I use this code on an actual website. What I'm going to do is head over to Wix Studio and there is this page just up here that I've been building. And in this section just over here, I want that circle to appear on my mouse to add a little bit of a dynamic feel to this section. So I'm going to add in a code segment. I'll expand it over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the code in here and plug in the styling for this. But if we jump back in here, this is with some body and HTML tags and other stuff. So I'm going to ask create an iframe version of this just for the CSS and JS and div. So let's see. Great. So this is the iframe version. You can see that it says iframe pulsing. Um, whatnot. But the main thing I want to copy over is just this main script over here, because this is going to do everything that I need. Let's give this a shot. I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to jump in here, paste it in. And will this work? Let's see. So this didn't actually work. And what's really cool is that there is show changes. I can actually click on different sections of canvas and go back to the previous code. And I almost get like a diff version like you would see in GitHub. And I might just copy this in myself. So I'm going to copy this into the code segment over here. And I'm going to copy this section just below it. And I'll give that another test. 
And I think that'll work. So if I select a preview now, when I mouse over this section, I have the cursor working perfectly. So this is really cool and what I was kind of after when I was building it. There also were a few other tools that come with Canvas. These ones just down here, which I want us to try out. The first one is add comments. I'm just gonna select this script over here and select add comments and see what happens. Here, I'm hoping it'll identify what I've selected, but I think it's just selecting everything and adding mockup comments to everything. This is pretty useful, especially if you're not a coder. This is going to tell you exactly what's happening behind the scenes, and this is just generally good documentation anyway, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next one here is add logs. I'm not sure how this will work, so I'm just gonna select it and see what happens. Uh, it's hopefully going to do something. So it says editing pulse cursor logs, but there's nothing really here to add logs for. Ah, the console logs. All right, so that's what's, what it's adding. This is perfect if, for example, you're doing coding in a terminal and you get to see when these things are activating. So for example, if I was to paste this into my script window now, and open up the terminal, I would see exactly what's going on just over here. As my mouse cursor is moving, it's updating the position of it. So that's pretty cool. Then we also have fixed bugs. I don't think I have any bugs in there. So I'm just gonna see if it identifies some bugs I wasn't even aware of. So it does seem to be cleaning up some of the code, simplifying it, and it's also removed all the comments. So I'm not sure if the comments were a bug, but I'll just accept that maybe ChatGPT thinks they are. And finally, we have a port to a language. Now I'm currently using JavaScript. I'd love to be able to convert this to TypeScript. So let's see what happens if I select that. It's gonna have to convert all the code. So this is CSS as well. But in terms of the script itself, you can see that it has used TypeScript syntax here and it's got your types appearing as well. So this did a pretty good job and I'm guessing that if I just was using regular JavaScript, it would do an even better job. I think that's all. There is also code review, which I guess might be it giving me a review of the code that it wrote and summarizing it down here. So let's see what happens. Ah, so it has, it's actually reviewed the code, given some suggestions here, like an improved title, cursor, circle, and notified using as HTML elements assumes that the element will always be present. Consider adding a full case in case this DOM selector doesn't identify that DOM element. So that's actually a pretty good item there for error handling. So pretty good comments in general. Um, there's even one here. So let's have a look at that. Use translate negative 5050 can cause performance issues. I didn't even know that. And cursor none, hiding the cursor may negatively impact user experience. So these are all pretty good comments and I can select apply and it's just going to remove that and apply that code change. So another great feature. Another thing I like is that it can actually work with feedback. So you can say good response or bad response. You can copy the text and you can even vocalize it. I've modified the code to allow toggling the cursor visibility by pressing the C key, improving the user experience. Pretty cool. So this is one example of using it directly for code. But what if you're, for example, writing maybe content for a website or maybe you're writing even a blog? Let's open up a new version of ChatGPT with Canvas. And this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to head to the Node.js version of Wikipedia, enter reading mode, save this text as a PDF. Then I'm going to upload it and say something like, create a title like this. Let's see what happens. So now I've just used Canvas to create a blog using the PDF from Wikipedia. And I can start interacting with this blog to continue writing. My changes have changed here now. These aren't related to code anymore, but to writing blogs. So I can add emojis. Let's select to do that. Now that looks way more cool, but maybe a few too many emojis if you ask me. I can also change the reading level. So right now this is made for a high school school student. You could do middle school or kindergarten or college and graduate. I'm gonna do kinder level. It's removed the emojis, which I think is a good change. 
I can also adjust the length. So for example, this is a pretty long article. Not a lot of people might want to read that. So I'm going to make it much shorter. Let's do shorter over here. And now it's a nice, simple article with about seven points and a conclusion that just gives you a high level overview of Node.js and why people use it in 2024. The only other thing I might want to do is add some jokes to it. I can also see what's changed between each iteration and that's pretty useful too. And I think that covers pretty much everything to do with this new version of ChatGPT.